Okay, everyone, let's get packing. Now, the first thing I'm going to do on this hard oak table is, uh, well, I guess I'm going to show you a glass double inkwell pen holder that I'm going to ship. So first I put down a piece of cloth to protect the glass from the hard wood table. Obviously, I'm now going to wrap it up in some bubble wrap. I think I was listening to the uh, best of the 80s. I hope I don't get copyright strikes for that. You hear a little eurythmics in the background? All right, one piece of tape on the side. How rude of me. How is everybody today? How you guys doing? I'm doing good. I guess I should say I'm doing well. Isn't that grammatically correct? I'm doing well. And I hope you are too. Taping the ends. Mm -hmm. All right. What's he going to do now? Show off what he's done. Uh, uh, okay. All right, here's the box. I am gonna change camera angles in a minute. You'll be able to see a little bit better. So just bear with me for now. This is one of the free priority mail boxes. Most of you know that you can order those from the United States Postal Service and they'll ship them to you for free. This is a 12 by 12 by eight box. I use a lot of these boxes. And just one piece of tape on the bottom. Again, you'll see me tape another one of these boxes after I change the camera angle in a moment or two. Fold the sides down. Again, this is a 12 by 12 by eight. There we go, camera angle has been changed. All right, there's the empty box, see it? That was my audition for The Price is Right. Now you see me crumpling, crumpling up uh, heavy grocery bags. These are clean bags, they're not used. I get these in bulk. I have a buddy who works at uh, a, well, you'll be able to see because the bags are branded by the grocery store. I'm not gonna name the name, but you can see it. They are extremely, extremely heavy, heavy, tough bags and I get them very inexpensively in bulk. So I rip them in half and I shove them down there and I make a nice, it's about an inch thick on the bottom, maybe an inch and a half. Good and tough. Okay, in goes the glass inkwell, which is pretty heavy. Now notice I'm putting it right in the center. There is a nice perimeter around the glass. This isn't a particularly, fr oh, there goes my supervisor. Can you see him? Going out to have a, a kitty treat. Gonna stuff the bags now. I crumple them all up and I make a nice, I guess you wouldn't call it a sandwich, but I tuck it down in around the sides. Obviously, if you're packing a very fragile piece of porcelain, you gotta be careful. See what I've done? Made a nest. That, that thing is safe and sound. A few more bags. In the corners. Again, you'd be amazed at how stiff these are. They really hold their form. Uh, they're not flimsy, flimsy, cheap bags. And that's the reason why I use these particular bags from this particular grocery store. And it really only ends up costing me less than 50 cents. And these are recyclable. I'm not using packing peanuts. Okay, now close the lid. 
And I pull the box into my body, as you can see, and I really pull, some folks forget to do this, to pull the flaps in as tight as you can so that the box is very snug and secure. One piece of tape across the top. I don't overdo it with tape. If you have good tape and you tape all the way down the sides, as I did, you're fine. Now, a lot of you are saying, huh, good luck. Why is he bothering to write the word fragile? Does that necessarily mean that that box is going to be handled with more care than if I had not? Not necessarily. Um, it's just for my own protection. If something should break, I just like to have that added benefit of saying, look, I marked it fragile. I, I told you it was breakable. Uh, buyers also like to see that as well, that you took the time to, to note on there that this is a fragile piece of glass, even though that piece of glass isn't terribly fragile. It only takes me a second, doesn't cost me anything. What am I doing now? I just, I left you. I left you at the altar. Oh, there I'm back. Oh, had to get an ink pen. Now I have to write on the box what the contents are because I'll forget. So I'm putting on there glass ink. I think I wrote glass ink. Yeah, glass ink. And when I put <clears throat> my eBay, my shipping label over top of it, thumbs up. Pull your pants up. He forgot to put his belt on. Have some coffee. Boy, this was a really high, hi, highly produced production, wasn't it? A lot of rehearsal went into this. <laughs> Change the camera angle. Okay, that was my supervisor meowing that he wanted his morning treat. Here's my beautiful Cuisel Art Glass lampshade that I just sold a few hours ago for $133 and some odd cents. Pull your pants up. Why don't you put your belt on? Oh no. Are you kidding me? Is this man crazy? You are not going to wrap. Do not tell me you're going to wrap that glass shade in a diaper. He's going to do it. This man is off. You know what? Hey, folks, why not? Be creative. I don't need these diapers. I have no use for them. <laughs> not yet. Anyway, I got a whole box of them at a flea market for like a dollar. And I've been holding on to them. Makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, I'm proud of myself. Look, it's going to be a nice little bundle. That art glass shade is going to be delivered beautifully. And yes, I did attach a note in the box letting my buyer know that it is not a poopy diaper. It's absolutely clean and fresh. Clean and fresh. And um, why not? I don't really like uh, to use those tape guns. I know you see me appear to be struggling a little bit. I, I usually do okay, but I, I don't have the high eye hand coordination to use those commercial tape dispenser things. I prefer just to use the little plant. Oh, happy dance, happy dance. He's proud of himself. All right, put it down. What are you gonna do now? Change your camera. Oh, we're back with the box. Mm -hmm. That is a 12 by 12 by 8 box provided by the United States Postal Service. Now you say, well, yeah, but that couldn't you fit that shade in a smaller box? That 12 by 12 by 8 box is kind of big. Well, I could squeeze that shade into a 7 by 7 by 6. But then I would be holding my breath, afraid that there wouldn't be enough room and that it would arrive broken. I'm not risking it. There's a nice big box. It's going to give me plenty of room around the perimeter to make sure that that shade arrives safely. Here come the paper bags. Making a, a nice bed in the bottom of this box. I'm sort of custom designing uh, a nest for that shade. And I can do that when I break all these uh, bags up. So I rip them in half. As you can see, it's very easy to do. To, very easy to do.
Okay, now I have a nice firm bed in which to place my shade. There's plenty of padding underneath and a nice buffer on the sides. See that? With a seven by seven by six inch box, that would just be too small. So I'm gonna continue now to put buffers around the outside of the glass shade. And I am not one to toot my own horn, but I will tell you this, this method works for me. There's lots of different ways people can, can pack their items. This works for me. In 2018, I had two breakages and they were both totally my fault. I knew that the things were gonna break. I wasn't happy with my packing. I, I sent it anyway and they broke. It was not the fault of the United States Post Office. It was my fault. And I learned from my mistakes. Of course, the buyers were funded completely. And I am happy to say that last year, 2019, with over 1,000 boxes shipped, I didn't have one breakage last year. Boy, that was, I was so thankful for that. Yes, over 1,000 packages, and I ship a lot of porcelain, pottery, and glass, as you know, and I had no breakages last year. So, you know, I love the United States Postal Service. Okay, fold it. Notice the big gap in the lid. Tape it shut that way. No. Pull the box into your body and then pull gently. Pull the flaps together. Pull the sides of the box together. Make sure it is nice and firm. And now tape it shut. You want no movement inside of that box. Okay, one piece of tape is enough. I use good tape. I make sure my tape is completely sealed and I bring it down at least two inches on the sides. I'm going to add another piece of tape, I think, because some of you are screaming at me to put a second piece of tape on there. It's not really necessary, but I'm going to put a second piece on anyway. Okay, it's, it's ready. See that? Give it a little squeeze, nice and firm. It's like, buy, it's like water, buying a, a cantaloupe, right? Nice and firm. Shake it, shake it. You don't hear anything. What am I doing? Oh, I have to write on there uh, what it is, the contents of the box. So I remember, I'm not ready to print my shipping label yet. And uh, once again, the word fragile. Go ahead and write that on uh, all four sides. As I said before, this is quick and easy. It does not cost me anything to do that. And this, this box will be ready to be put aside for me to print the shipping label. And that's all that's left is to print the shipping label, tape it on top, and I'm ready for delivery to the post office. There it is. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Okay, don't show off. Uh, now, don't do your happy dance again. We, we, we see. Calm down. Drink your coffee. Oh, my goodness. What a performer. We didn't tune in for all that mess. Put your coffee down and let's see you wrap another box. There you go. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see what's next. I'm going to wrap one more item for... Oh, pull your pants up again. Go get your belt, why don't you? Okay, now to wrap something different, much easier. A bicentennial mug, which just sold this morning as well, to a uh, wonderful subscriber who was born in 1976. One piece of bubble wrap here. I do not care for those tape guns. I, I guess you don't call it gun. It's that fancy handle. You know what I mean. They, they use them in commercial uh, stores and whatnot. That's a seven by seven by six United States Post Office box. Get it all taped up. All 
all right? Now, it would not be correct to just drop the mug in there and ship it like that. Close the lid. Why not? No. No, 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 no. Because it's going to rattle around, it's going to shake, rattle, and roll, and it will probably break. So here come the grocery bags. What you didn't see me do off camera was ripping them in half. I start off by just taking the grocery bags and splitting them. Now I'm going to make a bed. See how nice that fits down in there? You'll see in a minute. By the way, several of you have asked, and I'm going to talk to you about this. Look against the wall past the table and you'll see a couple of legs. Do you see that? The black legs that appear to be naked and dancing. I've had a couple people ask me, what the heck is that? Well, I'm going to need your help. And I'm going to talk to you about that piece of glass in an upcoming video. Now I'm really tearing up the bags into tiny pieces tucking it down into the corners to reinforce all four corners of the box. Nice and snug. Beautiful. I think one more piece though. I hope he's getting one more. Yeah, that's what you ought to do. I, I can see a spot there. Cover the top. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Close the box, put it against your body, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze the lid, piece of tape. That looks all right. Okay. Give it a little shake there. Is it gonna, is anything moving inside? Nope. Okay. That's what we want. Okay, put mug on the top so I don't forget what's in there. And I'm ready to print my shipping labels. Well, I hope this was helpful, everyone. I appreciate you watching me box a few items. And um, this method works for me. And I hope it works for you, too.